uh, I have a, like a little slide presentation I would like to share with you, but this is my first time doing Zoom. Well, not, not doing Zoom, but doing a presentation. So let's see if it works. Um, Can you guys see it? Not yet. Okay, I'm trying to to add the the sharing thing. Do you need any help? Yeah, it says uh, the Zoom wants to um, record. And then if I say yes, it says it has to restart something. Anola, uh, yes. this is Lee. I was caught in your position uh, uh, a week ago, two weeks ago. And uh, I actually turned my computer off and rebooted the whole thing and came back. And then I was able to get online. I just, uh, that was my experience. Yeah, because it does. Hey, I'm going to just stop the re to record it. <laughs> I'm Good. trying. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, okay. survive. All right. You, you see uh, some familiar faces in there. Well, this was us back in 2006, maybe. On the left, we are at the Wolfmobile. Yay! That's a really, that's a really old picture of the Wolfmobile. I don't know if it still exists. Yeah. Yes, it does. It does, okay. So next time I go, yeah, it would be really fun to go back to that, to that thing again. And, and do the whole tailgating experience, which I haven't done since I came back. You know, we don't, we don't have that kind of uh, fun in the games. And that was one of the, the things that I enjoyed the most. I think I was in a couple of game, in a couple of Husky games. And I also got to travel to Pullman. And we saw, I think I, I traveled with Kay. And we saw, I think it was the army. On a, on a father's weekend or something. It was cold as hell, coldest I've been in my life. So it wasn't really That's accurate. <laughs> it wasn't really that exciting to be in that cold. But we also got to see uh, the, this fraternity thing, the brick. And I think uh, Bryce was still there. And I don't know who else from the Doskins was living in there, but I remember uh, they were in that house a long, long time ago. And on the left and on the right, there's a picture of the exchange students from the, from the district. I think it was 50-50s, am I correct? Are we still? Yes. yes. And there's a lot of guys in there uh, from all over the world. There's people from Brazil. There's people from, from India, a, guy, a girl from uh, Germany, Japan. There's like four Mexicans in there. Uh, no wonder, right? That there's, we're everywhere. And the good thing about the exchange student program is that you meet people who are in the same situation as you, and you start sharing all these uh, life experiences as they are uh, occurring. So it's really cool to to have these people to interact with because they are going through the same thing at the same time. And with that thing in mind, the friendships that are uh, made or forged 
during that exchange year uh, have last forever. And now with Facebook and Instagram and all these these apps, we've been uh, we've we've kept in contact. We have a group, and I think it's a, around 50 people in the group. Uh, we've had a couple of Zoom meetings during the the pandemic, and it was really nice to hear from from all of them. And I still have a, a close connection with three or four of the guys, and. I think that's that's really uh, amazing and awesome. And I've visited a couple of them and some of them have visited here in Mexico. So the year is really a life changing, changing experience that actually uh, does change your life and stays with you uh, for, for a really long time. So that was us when we were young. It was like what, 24 years ago, 25 years ago. So now let's go. Let's go to the next one. Uh, this left picture is a lot of fun. This is Mexico. And here we are with the headlands. A lot of red, Gene, I'm sorry. Hey, no, <laughs> the picture isn't changing. We're still seeing the, the original one. Okay. I don't know. Let me see. There we go. I see the drive-in. Okay, do you see the, that one? The public market, yep. Okay, the left picture is the one I was saying. There's a lot of red in there. It's the Headlands and I in Puerto Vallarta, one of the trips they, they made to Mexico and they were kind enough to, to ask me to join them after a while of, of being away from the US. But the, uh, we've kept in, uh, in touch and our families, our parents, or my, I mean my parents and, and Craig and Margaret and Jean and, and Dave and Kay, uh, Marsha, all the people that were the, the Rotarians back there and were the people that embraced me, uh, we've kept in touch and uh, it's like an extended family. Uh, and I think, I I think uh, for them as well, we're the extended family here in Mexico and you guys are all always welcome to come here and have a good time. I think there was a big game, a big uh, a cougar game that night, and we found a little joint in Puerto Vallarta that was showing college games. Because, you know, the, the NFL is one thing, but college, really, come on, nobody watches that. So we find that little joint, and we were all wait, wearing our cougar gear. Sorry, Gene. That's all right. <laughs> and. I've, I've managed to, to, come, to come back a couple of times to, to Seattle and Arlington. And the, the picture on the right, I think it was 2010. And this time my brother Jorge, the guy who's getting married soon, uh, came along for the trip. And I got to show him uh, all over the place. Uh, we, went, we, we did all the tourist uh, things and it was a, a lot of fun to to be with him in Seattle and he also became friends with with Tony and uh, with Matt with Alex uh, of the Headlands we even went to Lake Cavanaugh with the Plattermans and we did a, a day at the lake so it was a lot of fun and so one one of the things that I still uh, care about the most is how these friendships have been, uh, you know, they're still strong and it doesn't matter that we're alone, really far away from each other, lots of miles, but we've always found a way to, to keep in touch. And I think that's really a, a really good thing. Uh, let's see the next one. As you can see, uh, I became, quite a lover of Seattle. And every time I get a chance, I talk to friends about it. And I even converted my nephews to be Seahawks fans. So I think that picture is 2015 when they were champions, am I right? Or probably the, the Super Bowl where they dropped the ball in the last second. I forget which one it was, but we were watching the game that day and that was the Super Bowl game 
a couple of years ago. So my, my nephews are already big Seahawks fans and they already have their little helmets and stuff. So it's a lot of fun to be able to, you know, to pass, to pass on the, the, the fandom for not only Seattle, but the city, not, not, not only the team, but also for the city. And on the next, next one is one of the things I talk about a lot when people ask me about you know, Seattle or how come I go there uh, so often or how come I have friends from there. And I always have to say, you, if you go there, you have to go to try uh, Dick's Burgers. And uh, I think the first time I was there, it was because Tony took me and now it's become like a tradition. And every time I go there, Tony's always waiting with a couple of burgers from, from Dick's and it, they're awesome. And I love the place. And I love how it became quite a, like a small tradition between us and extended to my brother because when he visited, he was the first one to, it was the, the first stop for him in Seattle, go to, to Dick's and, and have an awesome burger. And I really like the, the, the place as well because it speaks of a different age, different era. And it also has the, uh, the flavor of the old America. So it's always fun to, to go there. And right now I wish I could have one. Okay. This next one, I think it was close to 2013 maybe. And we're at the, at the Chase's house, right? Yeah. Yes. And there's Gloria, there's Marsha, Wayne. Uh, I think it was uh, when I traveled back for Tony's wedding and we managed to, to squeeze a, a, a dinner at their house and very grateful for, for that meal. It was fun to see everybody else again. And so this is, uh, you know, what I feel most grateful about is making friendships and uh, stretching them as long as it's been. So uh, I think for, even for a friendship in your same city, uh, it's always hard to make time and keep in touch. So uh, being this far and still call ourselves friends, uh, it's, it's really good, it's really fun. And this other picture is me at the new Space Needle after the renovation. Uh, I follow a couple of architects around at the, in the social media. And I, I always like the, the work from this Seattle firm. They are called Olson Kundig. And these guys have made a lot of stuff in the Pacific Northwest. And one of the, the, their latest projects was the renovation for the Space Needle. And I really like going back there and having been there before with all the, the steel frames and steel cables uh, preventing you from jumping. And it was a big change to see that there's all a, a big wall of glass now. And so it changes the, the view dramatically. So you can take better pictures. There's nothing standing in your way. And well, it adds maybe another 50 years from now. And it was a, a really cool thing to see, even though I had seen it before. Uh, this time it was 2019. And I was there for another headland wedding. This time was my little brother, Alexis. And well, I wouldn't miss it for anything. So I was there and enjoying an IPA, which are very good in the States. Okay. This is us like 25 years later. So Alex, the groom getting married, beautiful bride and Margaret and me. And on the other side, long, long time ago at the Headland house, and that's little Alex. And now he's taller than me. So it's a really nice picture of us. Maybe Crystal will cry when she sees that picture. It's okay. Well, uh, as Seiji said, well, I studied architecture and 
traveling became one of my uh, favorite things to do. Allows you to, to know uh, more culture, allows you to you know, develop your mind and the way you think and the way you feel about the world. And as an architect, well, traveling uh, opens your eyes to different buildings, methods, uh, the, the using of space uh, to the art and culture of different places. So it became a thing for me to, to travel around and try to see the world as much as I can. So a couple of years ago, I, after uh, I, I finished uh, architecture, I was working with a couple of friends for a few years. We, we had a small office and after maybe three or four years of working uh, with them, I had the opportunity to, to go to Europe and, and I took like a two and a half month uh, trip and we went all around. A couple of friends and I, we, we joined forces and we kind of designed the trip to go around places where we knew, where we knew people. And again, uh, because of the Rotary Exchange student program, I, I had friends in London, I had friends in Berlin, I had friends in Spain and I had some Mexican friends that were also studying abroad. And, you know, that opened up a lot of doors for us to uh, go backpacking through Europe. So it was a really interesting experience. I, I had a, a really low budget for traveling. And after a couple months, I think I lost like probably 30 pounds. Well, maybe not that many. Uh, probably 10 pounds from walking and carrying the, the backpack for a long time. On the left, there I am in Florence and that's the, the cathedral of uh, St. Mary of, well, the Fiore. It has, it has a huge dome, probably the, one of the biggest one in the world. And it was designed by an architect called Brunelleschi. And Brunelleschi came up with an idea of having a couple beams in the middle of the, of the dome. And it has two walls and, in, and two brick walls. And in, the, in between the two walls, there's a helicoidal staircase that takes you all the way up to, to the top. And well, it's an impressive work of architecture and art, painting, everything is in there. And a couple of years later, Michelangelo copied the, the dome and, and he used a replica of, of that design for St. Peter's Cathedral in Rome. But the, the original design was made by Brunelleschi in Florence. So it's a, a really nice cathedral with a lot of history. And on the right, I am in Barcelona. And this is a building by Antoni Gaudí. And it's, a, it's a, an apartment building. And one of the things that Gaudí liked the most was trying to make his buildings look natural. So he didn't like straight lines. He didn't like straight columns. So it was completely different from, from an engineering point of view. And this guy also uh, designed the, the balconies uh, in a way that should resemble more like leaves instead of iron work or lattice work. So it's very interesting, very different, and maybe kind of impossible to replicate right now because all the, all, all the work would take years and years and years. And right now, you know, life has been accelerated by media, by computers, by, you know, everything is going really fast. So there's not enough time to, you know, to, for, for making a building in, in this fashion. Here I am in, uh, in Berlin. Uh, this, is, this building is an addition to an old building called the Reichstag. And it is the Congress of, of Germany. The, the building was destroyed during World War. And it was after taken by, by the communists and they burnt it and well, burned it down. And it was just full of uh, you know, debris from, from bombs and fires. So it went through a lot, that building. And in the late 90s, it was reconstructed. And a British architect named Norman Foster, 
he designed uh, this dome and the dome goes above the, the hall where all the congressmen uh, gather. And the thing is that the people could uh, be taking a tour around and they could see uh, below all the people that are making the law. So it was a, a way to, to remind the, the, the Congress people that the people are above them and they're watching them. So it was kind of like a, a democratic statement and done in a beautiful way. And the girl I'm with is um, a girl from the exchange student program. And she was kind enough to, to receive or to host a couple of friends from, from Mexico and me and myself in her apartment in Berlin. And we wanted to go to the Reichstag because of the architecture addition. And as it turned out, she was working for a congresswoman from the Green Party, from the Ecological Party. And she got us uh, like this uh, IDs, but not as a tourist thing. We were like special guests. So we got access for, for the whole building. We even went to the cafeteria. The government gave us, the, 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 the German government gave us food and you know they 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 bought us lunch and it was a really cool experience we got to to meet uh one of the congresswomen and the, the one she was working with and it was really an interesting experience to be in that place and and, and have that kind of that, that kind of access so it was a lot of fun uh then we we a couple of friends and i uh, got to see New York for the first time. Uh, these two guys are on the left are architect friends. My friend Carlos has also come to, to Seattle. He was there probably 2002. And the first time I went back and he, was, he, he came with me, he was also an architect. Uh, I, I, knew it, I knew him since, uh, since high school. Then we both studied architecture and Carlos on the left he was there in Arlington too. So it's pretty wild. And a couple of years later, he started running marathons and he wanted to do the, the New York marathon. And I'm, I'm kind of lazy, so I didn't run, but I joined the trip and we were there for the first time. And traveling and architecture go hand in hand, you know. Uh, every time, every place you go has some, something to offer uh, in, in a design kind of way. And it's either a park or a bridge or a building or a museum. And everywhere I go, I try to find these little things that would make uh, an, a trip uh, more inclined to, towards art or architecture. And you, even Seattle has lots of, of things to see. Last time I was, I was there, Tony took me downtown and we got to see the new uh, spheres for Amazon and uh, that was pretty awesome too. It was too bad that I, I couldn't stay more days because they have uh, a special day for visitors and that is only Saturday but I think we were there on a Tuesday or something so we couldn't get in but there's always uh, something interesting going on in, in every city and the other picture is me at the Wall Street Bull which I hear now there's a little girl standing next, you know, for feminist uh, presence too. But I haven't seen that one yet. Back in 2014, my whole family, uh, on the left, my dad, some of you, yeah, you guys, you already know, my brother, my mother, and my sister. And on the right, the other guy is my brother-in-law who is uh, a doctor, he's a urologist, and my sister, she's uh, an ophthalmologist, and my dad is a cardiologist, so I come from a, from a doctor family, but I was, uh, I was never into that. But this time we got to see New York as a family. I had, I had gone there before. My parents have been, uh, have, have been there before too, but um, but my sister and my brother-in-law hadn't been there. So a couple of years ago, we traveled and we got to stay with, with Crystal and Anthony. Thank you very much again. And uh, they were there. So I took advantage of all of the guys I know and 
and it was an awesome experience. And also for my parents, because I think that was the first time they jumped into the subway in, in New York. Uh, we got to see a lot of things. Uh, we went to a theater. Uh, we went to a basketball game, thanks to Anthony. He uh, hooked, up, hooked us up with some tickets to see the Nets, and they won. And it was an awesome experience. And it was kind of cold those days. Uh, this is me in, in Chicago. Uh, back in the day, my mother was uh, sort of an exchange student. It was not a thing back then in the 60s. And somehow uh, my mom got to, to make an exchange with a family from, from a place called La Porte in Indiana. And for her, it was also an awesome experience. And she also kept in touch with the family. And a couple of years ago, I think it was 2005, um, her host mom was becoming 80 and they were throwing a big party for her 80 year old birthday. So my brother and I joined her to, to go to, to Chicago and Indiana. And I also found places to go. Uh, the, the building in the back is uh, an architecture school and it was done in, with the principles of the modern architecture back in the 50s, maybe, or, or maybe even earlier, it's from the 40s, I guess. And this was by, uh, constructed or designed by an architect called Mies van der Rohe, uh, who is a German architect who came to, to America, to the United States after the war. And he became the dean of the Illinois Institute of Technology uh, he was the, the dean of the architecture school. He also designed the whole campus and he designed a few buildings. And one of them is this one and is the School of Architecture in, in the IIT. So it, it was very interesting to go to, to Chicago and, and discover all these places that are famous in history and you know different uh, building methods or that were uh, kind of uh, the vanguard back in the 40s. So every time I go somewhere, I try to find these places. And Manolo? Yes? Just to give you a heads up, we have about five minutes um, um, in the meeting. I don't think anybody's going to object if you run long. I just don't want to um, surprise you if people have to start signing off in about five. All right. Don't worry about it. Okay, this is uh, me wearing a cougar, heart, a cougar hat. Um, I went to, I went, I go fishing maybe once a year with some friends. Um, as I told you, I like traveling, I like trying different stuff. And I found this picture. And as I tell you, I always try to represent the Pacific Northwest whenever I can. So I was, I was fishing, I took the, the cougar, <laughs> the the cooler hat. And well, uh, sometimes I, you know, try to do different stuff. Uh, I really like music. I think of myself as a failed musician, but I really like all sorts of music. So one day I thought, you know, why don't I try my, to, to play something my, for myself? And it was a, a thing I picked up maybe when I turned 30 and I learned to, to play the guitar. And well, this is me with a couple of friends doing kind of like a bonfire thing. And then it became quite a hobby. And I joined the band with my brother-in-law and old friends. And sometimes we, we play uh, and it's a thing that goes also hand in hand with architecture. Music and architecture are really similar. They all talk about rhythm and pauses and spaces. And so for a lot of architects, music is really important. And so uh, we made a band, we're called Kraken. We, we sing a couple of times, we do our little shows. And we've done a couple of uh, Christmas shows and we, we invite our friends and we don't play at bars, but we, we make like a, a single party and we ask all our friends to, to bring toys and then we give them away to, to some communities with uh, poor children. So it's kind of like a concert with a cause and that's been fun. We've done it like four times maybe. 
And that was my, my nephew's baptism. And my, my brother-in-law, Umberto, and me, and we, we played in the, in, the, in the place for a little while. We, we didn't play that much. It was probably four songs, but it was fun. And then I became a teacher after a couple of years of, of doing architecture and keeping in touch with some uh, old teachers and architects from the university. They asked me to join. And the, the picture on the left is probably 2009 or eight, 2008 or nine. And that's me uh, reviewing some of the projects. And on the right, there's, uh, there's the group uh, uh, where, which I teach with. Um, the design studio is a group of 10 architects and we, uh, each other has uh, a, a group from a different year. So two of, these, two of these guys go first year, then second year and so on. So this is, the, this is my team. And it's kind of like a, a cell. There's maybe 12 cells like this in the university. And we do the design studio, which is where they bring their small models and their projects. And we get to turn them apart and you know, scratch all over them. And it's a lot of fun. It's kind of therapeutical. And uh, so this year, uh, I became the head of, of our cell. I had been just one of the teachers, but this year, uh, the, one of the older guys stepped, out, stepped down and, and, head, and let me be the head of the, of the, of the studio. We, have, we each have our names and our, our little cell is called Synapse. Is it, is, is it the, the word, is it how you pronounce it? Like the brain thing. thing is. Um, so we have a lot of fun as teachers. Well, we go out to dinner. We try to, to keep close. And even though we're different ages, we have a, a, a mindset that sees architecture in a, in a common way. And that is that we're open for new ideas, that we're not close to, to thinking there's only one way to do architecture, but the, th the teaching thing, uh, we all agree that shouldn't be just in the classroom. So we do a lot of extracurricular activities and one of them is traveling. So I think uh, that's my thing, traveling. And this picture is me with a, a couple of students. We went to Mexico City to the National Library, which is a really amazing building. And we're taking probably a, time off from, from walking a lot. I do that a lot. I, every time we go traveling, I make everybody walk. I'm like a, the, the tour Nazi maybe. And we get to see art as well. And so it's not just going to see uh, architecture and buildings and that would become boring and, or dull. But we also go to, to different uh, things. We, we go to restaurants that we know they're cool maybe because of the food or, or, the, or because of the building. And we go to, to art uh, uh, fairs, or in this case, we went to this show by a German artist called Gottfried Heinwein, and he painted. That's my cue, like the Oscars. Uh, this is me at one of uh, Mexico's top uh, sites for architects. It's a, a small ranch and there's a, like a horse stall. There's a, a lot of horses in that place. And so it's a landmark for architects. It was not open to the public because it was a private uh, ranch. And last year, it, this picture was taken uh, exactly one year ago. And that was the, uh, the last trip we, we did at school with, with students. And we got to make an appointment with the family of the, that owns this, this ranch. And it was amazing because a lot of teachers that have been in the school for years have not been able to, to go to this place. It was designed by Mexican renowned architects, Luis Barragan. And uh, so it was really cool to get to to see this place. This is outside of Mexico City, it's not within the city, it's like 20 minutes away. 
And the guy from, maybe you've heard the Ericsson brand that used to make telephones. And they, they started with Telex, which I've never seen one. But this family, the, the Ericsson family, have the, the Telex uh, shipped from all the way from Denmark or Norway. I don't know where their family are from. And then one of the guys from the family came to Mexico to start uh, you know, selling these Telex machines. And he fell in love with the place and decided to stay here. So this was uh, this this house is owned by one of the the family members from the Ericsson company. So they had a lot of money, a lot of horses. Okay. This is me at the office. We try to keep it cool. There's always books on the on the desk, we're always talking, we're always listening to music. Uh, probably this picture was taken after seven, so there's a beer on the table and it's probably a Friday. So I don't think that I drink every day while I'm working. So this was probably a Friday, but it was, it was a fun picture. And well, AJ said, uh, and, and Margaret said something about the, our work. So I was trying to, I'm, I'm gonna show you some. This was a restaurant. This was uh, my first work as, a, you know, as, as an architect working with our own office. I, I had uh, a couple of partners who, we, who, the three of us are sitting in the, in the picture. The guy who's really blurred on the right is Carlos, my friend. And the other guy in the left, on the left is Juan, my other associate back in the, back in the day. And I'm the guy who's backwards. This is downtown San Luis. It's a, a very old city, probably from the 1500s. Uh, yeah, it was uh, founded like maybe 80 years after the discovery of America. So Christopher Columbus came in 1492. The city of San Luis was founded as a city in 1592. So it's very old. And we have a bar Baroque building. It's a a church in the back. And our first job was designing a restaurant on the terrace of, a, of an old house overlooking a main, a, a, like a small plaza. And we had that view. So really, we didn't have to do a lot. If you see, there's only one slab and a couple of columns. So it was a, an easy job. Uh, the thing was, you know, let's not do anything because all everything in front is already pretty. So that was the, the main thing, try not to screw up the, the view. Uh, this was uh, a small uh, tea room. Uh, the tea room was done in a very minimal uh, design or style. Uh, I, I really like trying to, to take off everything that is not necessary from, from a design. And the place we had was very small. So it was also a dis uh, decision that was going to be better for, for how people would use it. So it was so small that you could feel that maybe the, the space would enclose you too much. So we decided to make it really wide and white and free from, from a lot of elements. And the lighting fixtures are just a, a long continuous line so it kind of gives you a different uh, environment. And there was a kind of like a joke thing with the God save the queen sign. Um, a lot of people uh, connect the tea time with England. And since I also like music a lot, there's a, a song by a punk band called the Sex Pistols. And they also have a song called God save the queen, uh, which is like, a, you know, insulting her maybe. But I, I managed to, to get the song uh, put up in the wall and it has a, a double meaning. And it's also a piece of light, so it helps with the environment. And the owner had come, she, it was a girl, and she had just recently came back from, from New York and she was uh, very keen on the idea of the place looking like a, like a museum. So we chose, uh, these neon signs that you see in every uh, modern art museum 
to be part of the or the only decoration in the in the whole tier in the whole tier room. This was a, a clothing store that I designed in a for a different city, not not here, San Luis. Uh, this was uh, done in a mall, in a shopping mall, and it became also like the uh, like the design for for more stores to come. So the owner of this store has uh, four stores. Uh, he has two in San Luis and two outside in different states, but really close. So this became like the model store for for the next one. It was like the like the first the first time he managed to to design like an environment and colors and a whole image for for his brand. So I'm really proud of that. It was it really looks like a like a store I would buy in. Uh, this was an apartment building. I think this was the the first. I I do both design and construction. So I I also. I'm also in charge of, you know, measuring how much concrete and scheduling uh, the pourings and going with the with all the crew and you know verifying that the malls are okay. So this was a an all concrete uh, building. It's a four-story building. It has a under an underground uh, uh, parking lot, and this I think this was the the biggest the biggest uh, thing uh, that I've done. Uh, our, sm uh, our office is very small. We we're, we're only uh, four guys. There's uh, another architect, which is my partner, and two girls that are working, doing uh, both design and you know all the administration thing for, for the building process. And the thing with this building is that we designed everything from uh, the staircases, the knobs, the the doors, uh, the, the the garden. We did the the landscape. We chose which plants were going to be there. So it's a. I'm really proud of that thing. It's a ten unit apartment building. Um, this is a, a more recent design. It's it's a house for a friend of my brother. Uh, he knew that I was an architect, and he. Uh, chose me to to design his house and uh, it's quite different it's a really long it looks like a trailer like a stone trailer uh, on the top of two small boxes and the whole thing is surrounded by this gray uh, stone and the house is not that wide the the lot the the, the sites or the lots land in here in mexico is not as wide as you guys that you have acres uh, we live in a city that is more compressed so the, the it was only like 350 square meters that i cannot translate to to acres right now but it's not that big but we managed to make a small uh, garden in the center and there's a a, a little terrace with a deck and on the back we, you have the, the dining and living area which also connects to, to a little uh, patio in the back which has uh, a green wall with plants all over. One thing I like is uh, having a lot of plants. I think a design couldn't be finished without life and the plants are not just an ornament, they're part of the design. So if you take if you take away the the trees and the plants and the green, the design is not finished. So it's as as important as a staircase or as a door or as a wall. And well, the last one, this is uh, the house I did for my sister. They, if you if you see the the lot is not very uh, wide. It's like around 12, 12 meters wide. And they live in a small cottage, cottage, I don't know how to, if that's the correct word in English, like small private space. And it's really cool for, for the kids. Uh, as you probably know, Mexico is not the safest place to be around, especially for little kids. So uh, living in a private space 
has been more common uh, with the years, you know. And it's also, well, the house is a big, massive block coming on, and we had a really steep uh, site, so we had to level it, and we have like a little space, uh, like a rehearsing space for the band, which is behind the, the Mini Cooper. Uh, that's my my brother-in-law's car and on the back that little room that you can see that's the the band's rehearsing room and on top you have the whole house so you have to climb a first flight of stairs and then you enter the whole social area of the house so most mostly the house is on the on the second level and well this is it for now so as you can see i'm a, a sucker for traveling and looking architecture and going to places and visit people and practically, uh, I like to think myself of a man of the world. I don't know if you guys have any questions or doubts or comments. Welcome. I just want to say that's really um, awesome and, and uh, beautiful just to see your travels and how the influences are brought back home. And, and I love your style um, on what you design. So I really appreciate you sharing that. Thank you. Very well done, Manala. Thanks for sharing. Thank you, guys. Well, Manolo, it was a great presentation. And as always, I quite often thank you on all the things we did. And it's great that the program's still there. As you know, it's got a little setback this year because of COVID. But that exchange program is really great. It is, I think it's one of the, the, the greatest things of Rotary. And well, in my family, we've all uh, taken the opportunity. My sister was in, in Ontario. My brother went to New York. He lived in a place called Poughkeepsie. And every, every person that I, or that I have to, the, the, the opportunity to talk, to talk about it, I always recommend it. And I was going to say that the first all English book I read it was given me by you, Gene. It was Tim Allen's Don't Stand Too Close to a Naked Man. And you had it in your hat. And Tim Allen was still a household name. And uh, we loved watching Home Improvement. And I remember that was the first uh, English book I read. And it was him, that he, him getting out of jail and coming back to society or something like that. So thanks for that. Manolo, do you know, does AJ have your address? Oh, yes, she does. I uh, actually. <laughs> well, if, if, if you would wear it, I would send you a purple and gold hat so you don't have to wear all that other crap. I'm up for the husky gear, too. <laughs> okay. Manolo, What's your mail? Are you involved with Rotary? Are there Rotary clubs in your city that you might be, become a member of? I haven't been able to become a member. Uh, as I told you, my parents, my dad was a member. He was active for a lot of years. And a couple of years ago, he sort of retired from it. And so I was kind of close to what was uh, happening, but I had never gotten around to, to joining it. So I think my, my way of uh, being involved in the, in the community has been through the university. Um, I have a lot of, well, the, it's a state university, so it's not, it's not for private school. So I think that's, that's where I can, or where I feel that I can give back uh, a, a lot more and more focus on the things that I do and I like. So teaching architecture and making all these trips, uh, because we do uh, uh, a trip every semester and we take like 45, uh, students to different uh, parts of Mexico. So I think, because uh, I've wondered that myself, like, yeah, I never, I never joined Rotary, but I think uh, the way that I feel about giving back to the community is through, through the school, through the university. Well, you're, you are a Rotarian without a pin. We're always looking for good men. Absolutely. You're most welcome. You know, thanks. Thanks for that. Appreciate it. Perfect. Well, thank you again, Manolo, for your time. The, the excellent presentation. Really appreciated. Um, with that, I guess we'll officially close the meeting.
And, you know, if the room is open, you guys are obviously welcome to occupy and keep talking. So thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Maybe how it's